Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. If you are someone who enjoys talking about film, how about clicking that subscribe button? So we're starting off my new series with Christopher Nolan's 2008, The Dark Knight. <laughs> So like I said in the beginning, this is the first movie off of my new series called Hit Rewind, where I'm going to be uh, reviewing a movie that I have actually never seen before. Um, and I'm going from 2019 back. So yes, I have never seen The Dark Knight, this little lovely trilogy that I have right here. I actually just purchased it yesterday. The reason, dear viewer, that I have never seen this movie, because I know this is like a lot of people's like favorite movie of all time. The mere fact is I did not like Batman Begins and that's the whole thing but in case you're wondering where batman begins review is that doesn't exist yet but i am going to incorporate that into another series where i'm going to give movies a check second chance but let's go ahead and get back to the dark knight rises and if you're new yes i tend to kind of wander off into other conversations by myself at some point but it's okay uh i do eventually circle back you guys so the dark knight came out july 18 2008 this film stars christian bell as bruce wayne batman morgan freeman as lucius fox michael kane as uh, alfred uh gary oldman as the commissioner aaron eckhart as harvey two-face we have maggie gyllenhaal replacing kitty holmes from batman begins as rachel dons and of course the late heath ledger as joker this is going to be a spoiler review you guys so i did go into this movie with higher expectations i mean i again i know that this is like everybody's like favorite like superhero movie movie general whatever right i really didn't let the fact that i didn't like batman begins affect the way that i felt about this movie i'm not gonna lie i don't love the movie i personally wouldn't put it on one of my top list of anything to be honest with you um it's just it's just not for me I'm, I'm sorry like no disrespect but you know I'm, I'm gonna keep it real with you guys um it is a good movie I really did enjoy it after about an hour the opening sequence with the highs was awesome I was just like oh okay we're gonna start off this is already starting off better than what I remember the little bit that I remember from Batman Begins you know them killing off each other and the oh I bet the Joker told you to kill me no I'm killing the driver talk about what driver bam here goes the the bus coming in i mean that whole deal was great and i was just like oh okay we're, it's, it's gonna be good stuff i am already you know i'm digging this we obviously started off the movie with joker mind you we didn't actually see him till later on in the scene but you know you knew that was him you know and of course um when we do pan on him on the street when you know that's him you know you do get that extra little suspenseful music going on which i'm gonna go ahead and mention really quickly that uh the score in this movie the editing was really really great i believe it won editing or was it mixing no i think it was sound editing at the oscars um i really should have double checked and you gotta admit the whole escape plan with the school bus and like blending in with the other school buses was pretty genius and then after that for me the movie just kind of like uh I was just like, no, I'm not here for it. This is kind of like Batman Begins again. I was just so bored. Honestly, I kind of technically had to watch it twice <laughs> because I started uh, watching it last night, which was Friday. And I really need to stop watching movies on Fridays. I've said this many times because Fridays are my early days at work. And I always get so tired. If I watch a movie, I need to watch it like right when I get home because if I wait till later, then I'm just tired. I fell asleep. So then this morning, I had to like wake up and basically rewatch it. Once I was catching up to where, you know, I left it off, I was full on focus. And then um, shortly after that, it kind of started like amping up a little bit for me. And I'm like, oh, okay. I see what people are talking about now. Like, okay, I like it. I dig it. This is exciting stuff. But like just an overall movie itself, for me personally, I just, I wasn't here for it. This way you know that I'm not like with the hype and I'm not going to just say I like something because it's the cool thing to say. Of course, all the performances were great in this film. Um, one in particular, which is like the main one that really made the movie. And I think that's more so where all the love is really going for would be for the Joker, which we'll get to here in a bit. But we're going to go ahead and just talk really briefly about Maggie Gyllenhaal, who did replace Katie Holmes in Batman Begins. And honestly, usually um, recasts don't go very well. But for this particular one, it actually went fantastic. Honestly, I did prefer Maggie as uh, Rachel over Katie Holmes. I honestly i don't even re really remember her performance but i just i didn't like her in the movie like i was like why are you here and honestly while maggie was you know saying a lot of her lines i tried to picture katie saying them and i'm just like no i don't think they would work they wouldn't come out the same way so 
yes bravo for recasting her i mean no disrespect or like trying to shade katie in any way but honestly i feel like maggie just really brought something extra to this character i didn't know that she was actually replacing katie i just assumed she was like the new love interest of bruce wayne and so i was a little bit confused um at the beginning of the movie i had to actually look it up to see her name well i had to look up katie's name because i couldn't remember what the characters were and i'm like oh recast okay caught up now and the fact that she dies I, I did not know that one performance that i did feel that got really overshined obviously by heath ledger was aaron eckhart as uh, harvey two-face because i think he really did a great job i mean his character development within this movie and obviously the the accident that you know made him become two-face and you know the deformity being manipulated by the joker and then turning into what you were trying to fight against i think was really great of a performance and great of a storyline and unfortunately it did get overshadowed so we're gonna go ahead and just move on to Heath Ledger which obviously he did a phenomenal job Oscar winning performance and unfortunately he did pass away about like five or six months before the movie actually did uh, release so unfortunately he wasn't even able to see the final project don't want to see the actor you want to see the character up there and I mean Heath Ledger literally like killed it because you do not see him at all like half the time I forgot that that's who he was I feel like you've heard it all about him so we're just gonna continue moving on to uh, Christian Bell I don't know you guys with his <laughs> I don't wear swear but, ugh, damn it I can't do a Batman voice um so it did take me a while to kind of get um used to Christian's like deep Batman like over dramatic voice but I was just like that's just like a little bit too like you know but whatever it is what it is at the end i got used to it but it, it did kind of throw me off a little bit but that's really all i'm gonna say about christian bell to be honest with you um oh well i mean obviously i guess his story right in this particular movie batman no longer really wants to be batman and so he's trying to find kind of like his replacement which he things he finds in Harvey like he also wants to clean up the streets of Gotham and he has his morals you know of course it's before he like and becomes two-faced and kind of you know again becomes everything that he tries to fight against uh but because you know he wants to you know build up a life and have a life with Rachel of course it's like the dilemma of do I give up Batman to be with the woman I love one particular scene really got me into the movie was when um Batman was in that motorcycle Neil and he was um going towards the Joker and of course Joker didn't move it was like a whole chicken named Penny. Wait, was that it? No, that wasn't it, you guys. That wasn't it. That was when he tied up the 18 wheeler and then he like ran, he was going towards the uh the building, right? And then the motorcycle kind of whoosh and then did like a little like chingadera deal. I said, Oh shit, that's kinda cool. Um uh, but yeah, that 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 scene if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. That's a thing. <laughs> We're gonna move on. Um, some issues though that I did have with the movie that I didn't quite understand though um, was like when the Joker ended up going to the party to go find Harvey, you know, and of course, you know, he throws Rachel out of the window and Batman goes after him. We never really cut back to the party on how they leave or what happens to the guests or nothing. I'm kind of confused about that whole like scene or lack of scene that I feel like, you know, maybe there was a continuation and it just got cut. Um, yeah, let me know down below. We're gonna go ahead and circle back to Two-Face again. And I mean, honestly, the way that when he got his face burned off, I mean, that was pretty like cool, honestly. I mean, obviously the comparison would be that purple side to Tommy Lee Jones and Batman, is it forever? I don't know, I could be mistaken. Yeah, let me, yeah, can correct me down below because I'm, I'm sure I'm wrong. And I mean, obviously, the, the two comparisons, I'll, I'll try to put a picture up here. I'm not going to lie. I love the 90s Batman. Like Michael Keaton, that would be my Batman. When Heath Ledger died, I remember I was in a class and a student had came in and was talking about the Joker dying. I couldn't remember his name. And I went, oh, Jack Nicholson. They're like, yeah, no, wait, the Joker. And I go, yeah, Jack Nicholson. In. that's the joker because like like who i grew up with that's my joker let me know down below who is your joker who is your uh batman i hope it doesn't sound like i'm bashing the movie i'm really not just gonna give my thoughts out there and like have questions well i just had one because i forgot the other question hopefully it comes to me but it's not okay i remember as i was ending what i wanted to say joker 
you know, he really doesn't have like a real, I guess, like purpose why he's committing so much mayhem. You know, obviously with the mobsters, it's because of the money, but he clearly says he doesn't care about the money, but he literally like burns up the money. Mind you, that just hurt me so much. Like, um, can I have got a little bit of that money? Oh, and then also I would totally want to like go down that money slide. Uh, like a lot of times. The way that he justifies a lot of these things, like really does make sense. Like I know that they're wrong but it really does make a lot of sense and if you think about it when he did make that point of you know if he had basically killed like nobody like you or me you know the city would be uh the city really wouldn't have cared but because he did threaten that mayor right the whole city is like having a shit attack and it's panicking and everything so it just really has you kind of go with that whole like bystander and i mean the mere fact that a lot of these people like when this movie started off like nobody really cared about him they're like no we're, we're, there's, he's no he's no concern right he's just a joker he's just this like weirdo who wears makeup who is kind of crazy but you know nobody really like second guesses him too much i think it's one of the best sequels i'm not gonna lie i will give it that oh i do remember what I, one thing that i wanted to say and it was about two-face i did really wish that we had more of two-face going on i mean we did get him as harvey and of course you know the process of you know him becoming two-face but like i just wish we had a little bit more of actual two-face like maybe the accident could have occurred earlier on and uh, had his little mayhem going on a little bit longer i would have uh, preferred to have seen that just a tad bit more or even have had him survive and then that way we could have had like another movie with him i mean i don't know did he come out in dark knight rises did he maybe not die i don't know you guys because again i haven't seen it so hopefully i did not anger a lot of you with this review for my lack of love of the dark knight so i do hope you guys enjoyed this video and again this is the start of a new series so i'm going to be filming uh, two other videos today which will be for wally and for uh reservoir dogs so uh look out for those two videos that will be coming up in the next few days of course before you guys click out of this video don't forget to give it a like subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that i post something new until next time i'll see you guys at concessions bye